Well, welcome back to Steve Rob Reviews. Got a special show going on today. I got a special guest. We're talking about a special country, Canada. I'm going to let you know everything there is to know about Canada, and so is my special guest. I'm going to get a nice cold beer. I'm going to get myself all dolled up. I'm going to sit down. We're going to have a talk. Let's get to it right now. Well, I'm back and I'm all dolled up. And uh, you know what? We're having a nice cold beer. And we're going to talk about things about Canada that most of you in the world that are watching this YouTube channel don't know about. And I'm making this video for a specific purpose. Because a lot of people don't know too much about Canada. The first thing I do is get started off here is uh, Canada is famous for three famous things most other countries in the world cannot compete with. We are the best and number one. The first one. We like to drink beer but that's not on the list and I'm going to have a nice cold sip first. Okay, number one. Hockey players. Canada has the best hockey players in the world, bar none. Nobody comes close to Canada for hockey. Number two, maple syrup. Canadian maple syrup is better than any other country in the world, bar none. There you go. Number three, hookers. Canada has the best hookers, bar none, says my buddy Jerry from Calgary. I'm not too sure about the last one. I got no experience with hookers. I got lots of experience with hockey and maple syrup. Today I got a special guest on the show, my buddy from Northern Ontario, Doug from Pine Tree Lion Outdoors. Doug, say a little something here and let's, uh, let's have you introduce yourself to the uh, viewers and uh, mention a little something about yourself. Well Steve, thanks very much. Uh, Pine Tree Lion Outdoors has been uh, around for about, uh, well, about a, almost a year and a half and over the last few months. This guy, my buddy Jamie, is new to the channel, uh, amazing skills, and um, he cooks, he's out in the outdoors all the time, fishes, uh, hunts, does all kinds of crazy stuff. Hello. And uh, we're very modest here in Canada, that's one of the things that you should know about Canadians. We're always saying please and thank you. So thank you Steve for giving us the opportunity to be part of, uh, part of this video. But I do want to say, uh, you better subscribe to Pine Tree Line Outdoors, and here's why. Have a look. Why are we here? What is this abomination behind us? Okay. So guys, I'm standing here in a rail bed. No longer being used. Because so few people have even seen a bird to our canoe for 150 years. I just wanted to get out, have an overnight, uh, do some uh, good eating, uh, just kind of chill out, get uh, back into nature. Got my tent, which is just a tent from uh, Canadian Tire. I want to be close to home just in case eating this or parts of this doesn't turn out too well. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to get into right here is who is this video targeted at? Well, I tell you what, I'm going to mention a name in a minute. But my target audience for this video is my American friends and my uh, friends from the UK. And for you guys around the world, you're not too sure what the UK stands for. It's the United Kingdom. You've got uh, England, 
Ireland, Wales, Scotland, Australia, and New Zealand. And we're off to a good start right there, I can just imagine. So what we're going to get to right here now is we're going to start talking about maybe some stuff that you don't know about Canada. And the first thing is, you can take the United Kingdom and put it in any one of our Great Lakes in Canada more than twice. So there you go. Now, we're going to start off right here with a little bit of information that most Canadians don't know. And actually, this is something that we're going to start off with just the Canadians. We've got two types of senators in Canada. We've got the Ottawa senators, which are hockey players, and we've got the senators in Ottawa that are part of our parliament. And a lot of them are hockey players too. I have no idea what that means, but now we're going to go on to the reason why I'm making this video. Three years ago, I was talking to a buddy of mine down in Texas, Papa Texas, don't get no bigger than Papa Texas, and he was mentioning to me on one of these live chats here, well, I just said to him right straight, I said, do you know anything about Canada? He said, I haven't got a clue about Canada, I don't know where Canada is, never heard about Canada, nobody down here in Texas talks about Canada. So, then I talked to a couple of my friends over there in Europe. You know the people in Germany have no clue what's going on here in Canada? Not a clue. Ireland, not a clue. Wales, no, 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 no. Scotland, New Zealand, Australia. They have no idea what's going on here in Canada. And a lot of times I get some really strange questions when I'm talking about my northern camp. And people have no idea how big this country is. So Doug, I'm going to ask you a question right here. You take a look at all these YouTube videos, and you got people that have outdoor channels like yourself. Not once in my life have I ever seen in Canada fatwood. And you know what? A lot of people around the world are wondering, like, what are you talking about fatwood? Well, I never heard about fatwood uh, until I started watching YouTube. This is an American phenomenon about a tree down in the southern states, and they've actually crossed a pine tree with a hog. Yeah, it's like a bacon tree. And you would not believe, if you watch some of these videos, you will see this fatwood trees growing. And when you cut this tree down, you can just take a match to it and it just lights up like a stick of bacon. And I thought, wow, that is just terrific. Doug, have you noticed this fatwood stuff going on on YouTube? And have you ever seen real fatwood, used fatwood, or uh, would you like to have some fatwood? All right, Steve, I've heard all about fatwood. I'm telling you, people in the outdoors community, they're crazy about their fatwood, talk about the fatwood, lighten it up every Friday. And I don't quite understand about the fatwood the same way they do. But I can tell you right now, we got fatwood right behind us here. Fatwood everywhere here. Pine tree, line outdoors. We're all about the fatwood. Funny thing is, uh, rather than use fatwood, we're kind of big on using uh, these. The old uh, <laughs> Bic lighter. But anyways, now Jamie has a different take on it. Well, many years ago, uh, I dated this girl in high school. Her name was Shirley, and uh, she was big into the fatwood. Like, I'm telling you, we used to go camping out at her place there on the lake. And, you know, she'd be often running off into the bush looking for pine trees. And we were like, what, 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 what's she up to again? Oh, she's looking for fatwood. Fatwood. She couldn't get enough fatwood. That's the problem. She liked the fatwood. She liked the fatwood. That's uh. probably why we wouldn't last very long, but anyways. <laughs> okay, I'll give you another prime example about some interesting stuff in Canada that people ask the strangest questions about. And if we're out in the woods and we're picking some mushrooms or if we're just out in the woods at all, even gathering up some wood, you know how many times I've had people say, you know, you shouldn't really take too much because they have a hard time, you know, growing trees and, you know, you might be taking too many woods. Guys, I tell you what, on my bush lot, 100 acre bush lot, more trees fall down every year than I could burn if I had 100 houses. I'm telling you, we have more trees that you can shake a stick at. We're polluted with trees. We have way more trees than you possibly need. And uh, that's just the way she goes. We've got lots of everything. And mushrooms, guys... You can have all the mushrooms you want. You can go over here and you can pick like at least a dump truck load of mushrooms and never have to worry about depleting the resource. Doug, have you ever seen any area where you are where you're going to run short of mushrooms? Mushrooms. 
What do you know about mushrooms, Jamie? Well, all I know is the mushrooms that I used to take. Oof. You couldn't take them every day. There's no <laughs> way. Ah, not those kind of mushrooms. Oh. I'll tell you, Steve, we did a foraging video this past fall, and I got ripped, ripped on the comment section from people from the UK who were saying that we didn't put the mushrooms in the right type of bag. You know, we had we took the mushrooms, we put them in a grocery bag as we were carrying them around, and they were saying we should have put them in like an onion bag so that the spores could repopulate the mushroom uh, culture, I guess, whatever you want to call it. But I'll tell you something. What people in the UK don't realize is Ontario is about 1.2 million square kilometers, and the UK is only about 252,000 square kilometers. So basically, you can fit four UKs inside Ontario. And I would say, and Jamie, you probably agree with me, like easily over three quarters of Ontario is woods, bushland, yeah. where you'll find mushrooms. There's mushrooms everywhere. Yeah, so the area that I went foraging in, in my video, was about the size of a quarter of a soccer field. You guys can understand the pitch out there in the UK, only about that big. So I don't think I'm too worried about repopulating the mushroom culture population in such a small area when we have such a huge area of bush. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. that's what I gotta say about that, Steve. Back to you. Okay. So let's get on to a, another similar topic and a question that a lot of people ask is are you afraid of the wilderness when you're out in the outdoors? And you know I watched a video there just before Christmas on uh, Pine Tree Line Outdoors where Doug and his buddy were Jamie I think his name was were out camping overnight in the fall and uh, they heard some noises and that kind of stuff. And you know what? A lot of people watch these Canadian documentaries and they think they're real. They think that everything here in Canada is like uh, Walt Disney. I'll tell you a true story. And you may have seen this in the newspaper. There was this couple who came to Canada. They went out to uh, Banff, Alberta. And they seen, I believe it was, uh, a young elk on the side of the road. And they thought that it was just uh, like an orphan elk. So they picked up this elk, this little small calf, put it in their, in their vehicle, and drove to the uh, local RCMP. Well, that's not the bright thing to do. Because <laughs> if the mother would have been around these people wouldn't have been around. And uh, yeah, a lot of people think that nature is so kind and friendly and everything is like Walt Disney here. Well, it is not. And a lot of times people go out in the wilderness and they don't come back. You won't see that in the newspapers too much because they don't want people coming over here and, you know, being scared to go out in the woods. Well, you should be scared. I'll tell you that right now. You want to go out there with the bears and the wolves? You just have at her. Go out there and just, you know, just go right out in the woods and just keep on going. Because, uh, Doug's, what's your, what's your experience with, uh, with the great outdoors and uh, the Walt Disney, you know, kind of... Uh, portrayal of the Canadian wilderness where everything is just uh, just so nice and it's like Winnie the Pooh bears and that kind of stuff. Doug, what do you think about that? Walt Disney? Steve, seriously, there's nothing about the woods and the wilderness in Canada that's like Walt Disney. Tell him, Jamie. Oh, I'll tell you, every time Doug and I we leave the house, we tell our loved ones, you know, we hug them, we kiss them because as soon as we pass that tree line, you don't know what's out there. You don't know if you're coming back. We may never come back. Oh, never. Sasquatch, if, the Bigfoot. Yeah. And we usually bring lots of good food with us. Oh yeah. So yeah, we're we're just sitting ducks. We're we're. Yeah, they they want the food. Yeah. This video but, might not even get made. Bigfoot, man. Sasquatch, squatch. You got to be concerned about the squatch. I'm telling you right now, the squatch is in Canada. I'm telling you right now. Don't come to Canada if you're scared of the squatch. If you're gonna cross that tree line. Hey, you know what? This isn't an Iowa farm uh, field. You go in the woods here, you cross the tree line like Jamie's saying, you may not come back. You may be lucky to see us it's ever true. again. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Hopefully you'll see this video because we're inside the woods. Who knows? If we see you uh, in our next video after you subscribe, um, well, that's great. Yeah. We'll Dave, say hi, yeah. but be aware the Squatch is out there. <laughs> okay, so I tell you what. There's a lot of things about Canada that a lot of people don't know. And to tell you the truth, a lot of people don't ask too many questions about Canada. 
like Canada, second largest country in the world. And you know what? You go 100 miles north of the American border and there is nothing but nothing. We've got a whole country full of nothing. There's nothing there. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to see. So if you're coming over here expecting to see something, there's nothing to see, nothing to do, nothing, there's absolutely nothing out there. Unless you like the wilderness. If you like the wilderness, you like the outdoors, you like that kind of stuff, well then fine. Like if you like fishing and hunting, well that's right up my alley. And uh, you know, we've got more of that than most other countries in the world. I'll tell you another interesting statistic. Thunder Bay, Ontario. Most people never heard of Thunder Bay, Ontario. If you take a look at Thunder Bay, Ontario, they have more people from Finland that live in Thunder Bay, Ontario than Helsinki, Finland. Now can you imagine that? Yes, we have more people around the world that come to this country and they just love it. Doug, do you have many people around uh, you from uh, different nations of the world. A lot of people think that Canada is mostly like an all white country, but it's not. We have people from every country in the world here and we love it. We, we'd have no problem with anybody, but I would generally say the further north you go, the less people from hot countries want to go up there. So Doug, have you noticed a lot of people where you live and in the north that, you know, come from Africa, uh, come from uh, South America. I don't believe I've ever seen anybody from Mexico up here in Canada. I don't think they would survive in the cold. But uh, yeah, I've never seen nobody. Doug, how many people do you notice where you live come from countries that are really hot, like the desert country? All right, Steve, I know there's a lot of people from, you know, warm desert countries down in southern Ontario, but coming up to northern Ontario, a little bit different. But I know they come up here, when, when do they usually show up? June? June. They come in June, they come do some camping up here, they enjoy the great outdoors, northern Ontario, of course, in a provincial park so they don't meet up with a squatch. But what happens to them come around mm, September? They leave. They leave. They head They're back gone. down. The They're going back to Toronto. Toronto. Or back to their countries because yeah. they they know they know what's coming. The yeah. impending doom of winter is coming, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you, it's impending doom. One bad winter, and that's all it takes. <laughs> that's all it takes. You know what? Even we want to leave yeah. and go to these warm countries. Yeah. In fact, a lot of us uh, actually do go to these warm countries <laughs> to get away from this too. So it's our impending doom as well. Move to Toronto. No. Just, stay, everybody, just stay in Toronto. Everybody, if you're going to come to Canada, stay in Toronto. Stay in Toronto. We're talking about all these people from all over the world that come to Canada. The first thing that happens to them is they come to the first winter and they go, I want my mama. Because you know what? They don't know about this snow. They don't know about the cold. They don't know anything about the environment. And a lot of people think coming to Canada is, oh, just a bunch of fun. You could go there and just have a ball. Well, you know what? The further north you go in Canada, the less time you got to survive. That's about what it comes down to. You want to go up where my buddy Norm is there in Churchill? Minus 40 degrees all winter long. And that guy goes out there with just like a little bit of a lumberjack shirt on. And that's about it. Most people in the world would probably die. And, you know, you got to get climatized. You know, if you want to come to Canada, you got to get climatized. You want to go out west? Go to Calgary? Yeah, you wouldn't last two hours. You just freeze like a popsicle stick out there. And, uh, you know, when you're thinking about coming to Canada, hop in the hedge there from uh, New York into Quebec, don't even bother going. Because you're never going to make it through a winter unless you uh, stay in Montreal. So if you're going to come to Canada, stay in Montreal. That's what I'm saying. So... What I'm thinking is, what do people do here in Canada in the winter? Well, I make YouTube videos and, uh, you know, in a garage with some heat on. But uh, years ago, I went ice fishing, I went uh, snowmobiling, uh, played hockey, yeah, played hockey, made maple syrup in the springtime, and uh, 
I uh, can't add the hookers in there anywhere because, uh, well, you'd have to ask my buddy Jerry about them hookers. But, uh, Doug, what do you generally do all winter long? We've got uh, eight months of winter up here in Canada where you are. What do you do in the winter? So let our viewers know exactly what a typical Canuck would do in Northern Ontario during the winter. All right, Steve, you want to know what people in Northern Ontario do? Do your viewers want to know what people in Northern Ontario do all winter long, all eight or nine months of winter? What do we do? Jamie, what do we do? Where are you, like, where are you going? I'm telling you. Hey, I thought you had the answer for this. What are you doing? Oh my goodness gracious. I'm sorry, guys. So, if you're not playing hockey, ice fishing, or curling, well, you better be good at euchre. Yeah, that's true. But I'll tell you the one thing that everybody does in Northern Ontario. We sit around and drink a lot of beer. Aye, we do that. All right. Hey, listen, Steve. Thanks for having us on your show. Steve Robb rules, right? He does. He's got two first names. Uh, how can you go wrong? How can you go wrong with two first names? Thanks, Steve. Subscribe. Punch your line outdoors. We have some fun, too. <laughs> well, that's a little bit of an insight on what we do in Canada, what Canada's all about, and why you really shouldn't come to Canada. Uh, I'd like to uh, be able to promote Canada the best I can, but if you want to come to Canada, don't come between like uh, May and August because the bugs will eat you alive. And then you don't want to come to Canada between the end of September and March because it's winter. So you got a short little season and if you want to go somewhere in the world uh, I would pick, uh, I'd go to the UK. You've got uh, Ireland, England, uh, Wales, uh, Scotland, uh, and we're back to Australia and New Zealand. And uh, yeah, go to them countries. They're probably a lot better than Canada. And as a Canadian, I'm telling you that I think you'd be better off going on a vacation to them countries than coming to this place. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, my buddy Doug from Pine Tree Lion Outdoors. If you haven't seen that channel before, I'm going to put a link down below. And I'm going to put a special link down there for my buddy who actually inspired me to do this video, which is my buddy Papa from Papa, Texas, in Texas. And it don't get no better than that. So thanks for joining me here today. Come back again. If you haven't seen this channel before, you're welcome to subscribe and learn more about Canada. Cheers.